Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. So I'm out here today at my pond and I thought I'd give you some, you know, what I've learned on when it comes to pond maintenance and experience with our ponds. We have two ponds on the homestead when we first moved here. Uh, one was in great working order, that's the one behind me, and then there was another one that had been kind of filled in because cattle had gotten there years before we moved here and kind of tread down the walls of the pond and kind of ruined the pond. And that's up the hill a little ways. And um, we're, we're, our plan is to dig that one back out eventually at some point and then uh, get it back to working order and put fish back in it. This one has got plenty of fish in it, lots of largemouth bass, lots of uh, uh, bluegill, some red ear sunfish, and I want to give you kind of a rundown on what we got here. It's really muddy right now because of uh, the uh, rain we just had. We had about three and a half inches of rain, and so the pond is really, really muddy right now. But that's why it's muddy. So um, you, you'll see, you can notice there's a lot of lily pads in there, tiny little lily pads, some, 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 some water grass, I don't know what you call them. They're not really lily pads, they're smaller than that. I'm not sure what the exact name is. But when we first moved on this homestead, this was not here. And about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago now, I started to see this stuff growing up in the pond and I was like, man, what is up with that? And because it was making our, because you can fish in here. And you know, my son Joshua caught his first uh, fish in this pond when we moved here, really nice large mouth bass. And um, it was making fishing very difficult in this pond. And so, because you're getting snagged on your line all the time when you're casting out and out in the center there, it's okay. But when you try to reel it in, man, it, it just gets caught on all this grass here, all that stuff. So I went to the local extension agent, <coughs> excuse me, in town, the extension office, most of you guys probably have an extension office where you live if you live in rural America. And they provide a lot of great free information. And I talked to the guy, his name was Daryl, and he told me that, you know, having a pond, and this I did not know at all, having a pond is almost just as maintenance heavy as owning a pool. A pool, you know, because uh, Tim, when he lived in Florida, he actually had a pool at his house uh, for a while. And he would, would talk about how much work it was to have a pool. There's a lot of work involved, a lot of maintenance involved with having a pool. And if you have a pool, you know what I'm talking about. Well, the extension, op the extension officer at the extension office told me that owning a, a, a pond is almost as uh, time-consuming and um, maintenance-heavy as owning a pool. And he says, because there's nothing you can do about these things. They're going to grow eventually. And um, you have trees. See all these trees that grow along the bank? Well, eventually those trees send their roots deep, and they will actually ruin the sidewalls of the pond and allow the pond to leak out. And so you have to keep this thing maintained by taking down those trees and, you know, dealing with every so often the grass that grows up in the pond, these lily pads and stuff like that. And I said, well, listen, I've got this stuff growing. You know, how do I take care of this? And he said, well, there's a couple of options. Number one, you can have, uh, you know, a backhoe come out and, and dig it out. And, you know, or you can redo the pond. You can break the, one of the walls of the pond and let it drain out, which would be over on this side, because there's the, the top side of the pond is over here, but the downside is over there. So you could break one of those walls and drain the pond, dig it all out, and then start over. Well, that costs a lot of money. You've got to rent a backhoe or hire somebody to do it. And, um, and then you basically start from scratch. Or you can have a backhoe come in here and try to scoop out as much as you possibly can. Again, that requires a backhoe. Or you can use different chemicals they, they have where you can put in here a little at a time and kill off all of these um, these lily pads and I think there's a roundup a roundup uh, chemical that, that I think it's made by roundup it's basically a salt that uh, will kill these things um, so there's just lots of options you know to, to deal with that I didn't want to use any chemicals obviously we're not into using any roundup for sure um, but another guy told me that you can use just plain rock salt and put it in little by little places every so often and it'll kill these things and that will allow you to have you know a place where you can cast out and then reel in without having any problems um, but uh, you know eventually you can do the whole lake that way by putting that rock salt down but if you put too much rock salt in you can kill your fish so you got to use it sparingly and only in certain spots every so often so that was one way uh, the other way we found maybe is to throw in a cattle panel with um, barbed wire attached to it and then rake out this stuff and pull the roots out now we did that over there and you can kind of see that little path see that little opening right there where there's no lily pads we did that right there just as an experiment and it seemed to work i mean there's no lily pads right there 
uh, were very few in that one little spot, that one little spot right there. So we may do that along with some of the rock salt to open up this pond again. Uh, basically you flip it out there with the barbed wire attached r running around the, the cattle panel and then just drag it out and uh, let it rake out some of those, those, uh, those lily pads. Uh, there's a lot to do. I mean, it's, it's, it is. It's time consuming. It's maintenance heavy. Uh, having a pond is, is not just as easy as, you know, digging a pond and allow, putting fish in there. So it's just, it's kind of a pain in the butt. And then if you do get one of these trees along the side that does spring a leak, there's some kind of clay material you can use to plug the leak after you take the trees down. Um, and then also with the height of some of these trees around the pond right now, if I cut some of them down, they probably already have roots going through the sidewalls of this pond. When those roots start to rot because I've cut the tree down, you may be asking for an opening to open up and water to leak out. So it's, it's kind of a mess. But we're going we're gonna to see, once I get this um, track loader that we're going to be getting for the homestead, we'll be taking a lot of these trees out and um, clearing out some of this. And hopefully, you know, clearing out some of this as well. So there's just a lot of issues with this pond. Now, when we first moved here, a lot of the fish that we caught had these little worms in the skin. Um, I don't know what the scientific name for these worms are, but they were in the fins and in the gills and in some of the skin of uh, the muscle tissue of the fish we were catching. And I finally went to the extension office about that, and he told me what they were. And he said there's lots of ways to get rid of those, too. You can put chemicals in. Everyone wants to use chemicals. Well, I don't want to use chemicals. So he told me the only way to get rid of those things, and I'll try to find a picture of it and put it on the screen, um, of these little worms that get into the fish. It's a parasite. And the parasite is, uh, exists because of a life cycle. And there's a lot of farmers. Now, I'm not one of them. I'm not one of them. Just wanted to put, point that out. I'm not one of them. But there's some farmers out there who will, um, anytime they see cranes or water birds, uh, some of these uh, cra water cranes and things like that land on their pond, they will shoot them. Now, these are protected species. You're not allowed to do that. But I know a lot of farmers who do it uh, because they're part of that life cycle for those parasites. And if a farmer wants to protect his pond and the fish in it from getting these parasites, you have to kill the birds. The larvae exist in the throats of the birds. And every time they come in and take a drink of that water for that pond, they release the larva from their neck into the water. And then that larva... What it does, it seeks out a snail in, inside the pond. There's snails inside the, the, the mud of this pond, and um, they will uh, uh, lodge themselves with the snails, and then they'll grow some more, and then from the snail, they migrate to the fish, and that's where they complete their life cycle. And then from the fish, it starts all over again, back to the larvae that get into the, um, uh, the, the, the water, which the, the pelican or the uh, water crane drinks, and this, the whole life cycle starts over again. So they said the way you naturally fix that problem is to put in red ear sunfish. Red ear sunfish, also called sun, uh, shell crackers, shell crackers. And so red ear sunfish will eat those snails, that's why they call them shell crackers, and they'll break the life cycle of that, that parasite that gets into the fish. And so I think two years ago, me and Tim went and we purchased about 50 shell crackers and put them into the pond. And we haven't checked yet, because it was about that time when all these lily pads started showing up and it was making it really hard to fish. So I'm really interested to get in here and fish at some point and see if uh, those shell crackers took care of that parasite that was getting into the fish. So it's just, again, a pond is a lot of maintenance. And um, it's just one of those things, you know, you, you don't know it until you do it, you know. But I always thought, you know, having a pond would be something easy, simple to have. And, and you just enjoy it by coming out and going fishing. You have your own fishing pond, and whenever you want to fish, you come down here and fish, and it'd be something great for the kids to do. Little did I know how much maintenance is actually involved in a pond, and it's something for you to keep in mind if you get a pond on your property, or if you're interested in, in at some point building a pond, it's not as simple as filling it with water, filling it with fish, and enjoying it for a lifetime of fishing. Uh, it's something that does require maintenance. It's time consuming. And um, the, like the extension agent said, I don't know if it's as much work as, as a pool, but uh, there is maintenance that is required uh, for these ponds. Anyway, thought a, bit, a little bit of information I thought I'd give you and uh, hope, you'd, uh, hope you'd get something out of it because, you know, I'm just trying to share the information I'm learning here on the homestead and um, sharing it with you guys. So um, it is what it is. It's just, it's just one of these things on 
on having a homestead and uh, dealing with the issues that come up. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the video, please check out this list of amazing folks. These are our patrons. They make all of our videos possible. For more information, you can go to patreon.com slash an American homestead to see all the benefits. Uh, we couldn't do these shows without our patrons. So really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. All right, guys, uh, check out the videos on the left. Hit that subscribe button down there. All right. See you next time on the homestead.